Good afternoon and welcome to the National Trademark Exposition. I'm Sue Fruchter and I have the privilege to serve as Interim Director of your National Museum of American History, the most visited history museum in the world. We are honored to welcome so many distinguished guests, including Under Secretary of Commerce for Intellectual Property and Director of the United States Patent and Trademark Office, Andre Yanku, Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner for Trademark, Mary Dennison, <laughs> and renowned advocate and lover of history, author, commentator, and basketball legend, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. We thank the entire team from the Trademark Office and our Lemelson Center for the Study of Invention and Innovation, led by Arthur Damrich, for this exciting program. And we are appreciative to the American Intellectual Property Law Association and the International Trademark Association for their generous support. We are thrilled to host this two-day program in collaboration with the United States Patent and Trademark Office including over 20 displays from dynamic and innovative companies, nonprofits, and government agencies. So in, in addition to enjoying the panel discussions, please walk around and see the displays, invent new products and design, and find out how to strengthen your own trademark in the activity zone. This trademark exposition celebrates a foundational American pillar that flows through our history protecting innovation, and stimulating new consumer products and services. Our founders understood the value of protecting innovation and encouraging new ideas. While trademarks came under formal protection in the late 19th century, our collection of 18th century Paul Revere silverware is a wonderful demonstration of how Americans have used marking from our earliest days distinguish the quality of their products from their competitors. And today, as many of you are working to develop your own personal brand and new inventions, there is much to learn from this program and from our exhibitions. Here at the National Museum, we preserve and share a collection of national treasures on behalf of the American people, and indeed the world, to help us make sense of the present, and most importantly, shape a more humane future. History matters because it helps us understand where we have come from and opens opportunities for discussing and taking action for the future. And so we are working to bring the nation together around fundamental American ideals and ideas like democracy, opportunity, and freedom. And of course, invention and innovation which join us as a people. To realize this ambitious vision, we are in the midst of a 20-year, $600 million complete reinvention of every facet of this museum. Our invention and innovation wing, which surrounds us today, was renovated and reopened in 2015. It showcases stories about diverse inventors, broadens definitions of who inventors are, and demonstrates that innovation is a process built around testing, tweaking, and bringing new products and services to the public. Innovation and business are infused into every component of this floor, from igniting young minds in Spark Lab over to your left, where school-aged children became inventors, become inventors by fusing science and engineering with history, art, and creativity, to showcasing the importance of American inventors in American enterprise, the Smithsonian's first exhibition on the history of American business, which emphasizes the connections among inventors, entrepreneurs, and consumers that fostered America's growth over the past 200 years. Over the next 10 years, as we work to transform the museum, we will be opening new exhibitions on science, medicine, entertainment, culture, and so many other fundamental American themes. And we are weaving the American spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation into all of these projects, of vital importance 
to an ever-evolving nation facing waves of change on the horizon. It's now my pleasure to introduce a dear friend of the National Museum of American History, Mary Dennison, the Commissioner of Trademarks for the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Mary leads all aspects of the trademark organization. She is known for her outreach to the trademark legal community, small businesses, and for making the trademark process more accessible to startups and innovators. She has served as a member of the Board of Directors of the International Trademark Association and holds degrees from Duke University and the University of North Carolina School of Law. Mary, welcome and thank you again for your friendship and collaboration. Thank you so much, Sue, for that kind introduction. And good afternoon, everyone, including those of you watching remotely. Welcome. We are so excited that the National Trademark Exposition is being held here at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History for the very first time. A big thank you to the Smithsonian for collaborating with us on this important event. I saw a recent article that the average consumer is exposed to up to 10,000 brand messages every day. 10,000. Amazing. How many brands are you wearing right now? I have on at least five. You probably do too. Most people are not even aware of the multitude of advertisements they see or hear all the time and the trademarks behind them. And studies have shown that kids as young as two can recognize most of the popular brand logos such as the McDonald's Golden Arches or the logos for Pepsi, or Starbucks, or Target. Take a look at this video. Somebody's supposed to. Looks like there's a donut. <laughs> donut. Take a guess. What do you think a company like that would make? Bow ties. It. Um, Coffee. My dad gets coffee there a lot. Next. That says, I love New York. Where do you live? In, in, in my house. <laughs> my Father, father's and my mother's laptop. laptop. <laughs> That's the type of brand that my dad smokes, a cigarette brand. Uh, this, this is for Wi-Fi. Isn't that fabulous? I still remember taking my daughter to an antique show when she was about 18 months old, and she saw the Visa logo, and she said, Visa. I almost fell on the floor, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised because my Visa card does get a lot of work. <laughs> um, an important part of our mission at the US Patent and Trademark Office is education and outreach. This venue being a place of fun learning right on the National Mall certainly aligns with those goals. Today is a fun day for you and your kids to brand a sneaker, to participate in a scavenger hunt for trademarks, or learn what a trademark graveyard is. In addition, after you learn about trademarks, we suggest that you head over and check out the museum's exhibits, particularly the Draper Spark Lab, where museum visitors can become inventors. We hope that today each of you will learn more about the importance of trademarks to the economy as well as your own personal lives. In addition to being vital to the economy, trademarks are everywhere and they are fun. This year we're welcoming 20 exhibitors to teach you about their brands and the importance of trademarks. We have 1,000 Cranes LLC, American Intellectual Property Law Association, DC Roller Girls, Edible IP LLC, DBA Edible Arrangements, Girl Scouts Nation's Capital, Global Brand Council, U.S. Chamber of Commerce, International Trademark Association, Lucia's Labs, LLC, Microsoft, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, National Park Service and National Park Foundation, Numbers Alive, Politics and Prose, Safeway, Segway, Inc., Teneco Automotive, the National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders, Under Armour Inc., Velcro Companies, 
and YMCA. Many of these exhibitors have brands that you probably recognize, but there are also some newer, fun brands for you to get to know. You'll see the importance of trademarks in every line of work. We also hope that you'll check out our USPTO booth, which has information on the important role that trademarks play for businesses, plus materials to help you to learn more about the trademark registration process. In closing, I want to thank Shana Webster Trotman and Chrissy Breitmeyer King, who led the 2018 National Trademark Exposition for our agency, together with Arthur Dimericht for the Smithsonian. They have worked so hard to make this fantastic event happen. Let's give them a big round of applause. And now I have the honor of introducing USPTO Director Andre Yanku. Andre Yanku is the Undersecretary of Commerce for Intellectual Property and Director of the United States Patent and Trademark Office. In this role, he provides leadership and oversight to one of the largest intellectual property offices in the world, with more than 13,000 employees and an annual budget of over $3 billion. He also serves as the Principal Advisor to the Secretary of Commerce on domestic and international intellectual property matters. Before joining the USPTO, Mr. Yanku was the managing partner at IRL and Manila LLP, where his practice focused on intellectual property litigation. He holds a Juris Doctor from the UCLA School of Law and has a Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering and a Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering, also from UCLA. And he is a huge fan of Kareem. In fact, he even has a bobblehead on his desk. <laughs> so please join me in welcoming USPTO Director Andre Yanku. Thank you, Mary, and so good to see all of you here. Intellectual property really is exciting, and I can tell uh, from all of you being here that that is the case. The fact is that intellectual property is our future. As I often say, through the doors of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office walks our future. Uh, and how true that is. It is especially wonderful to be here with all of you, and I'd like to thank the entire staff at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History for hosting us during this two-day festival. We are so pleased to collaborate with the Smithsonian on shining a spotlight on the importance of trademarks in the global marketplace. I also want to thank the more than 12,000 employees of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for everything they do on a daily basis to advance intellectual property and the effort they have put together for this event. Often considered the most valuable asset of a company, trademarks prevent confusion in the marketplace by helping consumers identify their trusted or preferred brands, thereby engendering goodwill and customer loyalty. Some of the world's most famous brands are valued at hundreds of millions of dollars and sometimes more. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office creates and maintains the Federal Register of Trademarks that provides notice of 2.3 million marks in use today. Needless to say, and as Mary just mentioned in her remarks, trademarks play a significant role in the United States economy. The primary function of the Trademarks Division at the USPTO is to examine and register trademarks, service marks, certification marks, and collective membership marks that meet the requirements of the Trademark Act. Critical to that mission is educating the public about the importance and value of trademarks. And we work hard every day to do this. Some of the ways we educate the general public and business owners about trademarks is through the creation of educational materials, as well as videos posted on the internet, as well as on our website. We also participate in community events throughout the country and provide training and instruction on trademark law. And of course, events like this one are a big part of that effort 
because we can introduce thousands of people like those of you here today to the importance of trademarks and how to learn more about them. Today we are launching another public education initiative, this time on the subject of counterfeit goods. Counterfeit, counterfeits are goods that appear to be safe and legitimate, but unlawfully copy familiar brand names and are sold illegally. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, trade in counterfeit goods has increased by more than 80% in the last five years, increasing to $250 billion annually in 2008 to more than $461 billion in 2013. Additionally, the report determined that counterfeit products now represent more than 2.5% of all world trade. And while some people believe that counterfeiting is a, quote, victimless crime, it is important to note that every day consumers are exposed to ineffective and sometimes life-threatening counterfeit products. Recognizing how vitally important it is to educate the public about the harms of counterfeit goods, the USPTO is today launching a video contest to collect 30 to 60 second videos about counterfeits. The video contest is entitled Consumers Combat Counterfeits and the winning videos will appear on the USPTO website and will be considered for use as public service announcements. In each of your tote bags, you will find a flyer with additional information, and you can learn more at www.uspto.gov slash tmvideocontest. One word. So, thank you all again for being here. I encourage you to stay and enjoy the other activities and presentations throughout the day. And with that, let me turn it over to our Commissioner of, of Trademarks, Mary Dennison, who will introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me take a moment to um, <clears throat> correct an error. I forgot to credit the owner of the copyrighted uh, video we used, Daniel T. Allen from Sovev Media. Thank you very much. Now, it is my honor to introduce Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the greatest basketball player in history. We are so honored to have him here today. He retired from the NBA after playing a record 20 seasons, as well as setting records for points scored, games played, minutes played, block shots, and defensive rebounds. He was also a record six-time NBA MVP a record 19-time NBA All-Star, a 15-time All-NBA selection, and an 11-time NBA All-Defensive team member. But since retiring from the NBA, he has been active as an education advocate, as a writer of social commentary, novels, history books. He's written 15 books, including his most recent New York Times bestsellers, Coach Wooden and Me, our 50-year friendship on and off the court, and becoming Kareem, growing up on and off the court. Mr. Abdul-Jabbar also produced a documentary, documentary adaptation of On the Shoulders of Giants, which won an NAACP Image Award. And of particular interest on this day, <coughs> excuse me, championing intellectual property rights, it's also important to note that he has written a book called What Color is My World? The Lost History of African American in Inventors. And in October, he'll have another novel coming out. In 2016, President Obama awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the country's highest honor for civilians. He's here with us today to talk about the importance and fun of trademarks and intellectual property. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming the legendary Kareem Abdul Jabbar.
Thank you, Commissioner Dennison, and, and good afternoon, everyone. It's really great to be back here at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History to talk about the importance of intellectual property and trademarks in particular. I was really pleased to be asked to participate in a national trademark exposition so I could talk to you about why trademarks matter. Let's start at the beginning. Trademarks are product names or names of services. Look around you. We have a bunch of exhibitors here today who all own trademark registrations. I even own a trademark registration for my name. But I'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. I'd like to take a moment to give you a few reasons why you should take, uh, why you should pay attention to the issue of trademarks. First, trademarks are a form of uh, consumer protection. Trademarks let customers know the source of products and the services in the, in the marketplace. Potential customers want to know that the t-shirt or computer software that they are considering buying is, is the specific product that they want. Customers want to know the product they seek is real and the quality that they have come to associate with that trademark, not a knockoff from someone else. So one critical thing that a trademark offers is consumer protection. Second, trademarks enable you to build a brand for your product, especially today via social media. And trademarks have value. In some, case, in some cases, your trademark might, be just, might just be the most valuable piece of property that you own. The most valuable trademark in the world is Apple trademark, which was valued in the 2017 Interbrand Survey at over $180 billion. I know that my trademark is not worth that much. <laughs> but it's still very valuable and can keep consumers buying my product. So trademarks can add a lot of value to your business. Third, trademarks can be recognized around the globe and therefore they transcend language, culture, and borders. Whenever I travel overseas, I am always interested to see what American brands I can spot, even when I can't read the language. I can always spot McDonald's Golden Arches or the Starbucks Mermaid. Finally, I know firsthand the importance and value of a trademark. As I mentioned a moment ago, I have a registration for my name, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I use it to sell t-shirts, jerseys, socks, shoes, etc. But more importantly, I use my brand to promote good works. One of my favorite co causes is my nonprofit, the Skyhook Foundation. When many of you hear the term Skyhook associated with my name, you likely think of the, ba of the basketball shot I became known for perfecting when I played in the NBA. The shot that couldn't be blocked is how some have come to describe it. And from that shot, my foundation's mission was created to give kids a shot that could not be blocked. I try to do this by bringing educational opportunities to underserved communities. One of the ways we accomplish this is through Camp Skyhook, where we bring fourth and fifth graders to a camp in the Angeles National Forest for five days during the school week and let them learn about nature and give them a hands-on immersive experience with science, technology, engineering, and math known as STEM. The STEM fields contribute so much to the world and those who work in these areas should be revered as heroes in our society. As we all know, there can only be a few superstars in the world of sports or entertainment, but the possibilities for those in STEM fields is truly limitless. To generate interest, excitement, and enthusiasm among our kids for science, technology, engineering, and math, we have we have to enable them to see themselves in a STEM role. We try to encourage them and provide opportunities to learn more. We need our kids to have role models other than rap stars, reality stars, or basketball stars. I have never considered myself, I, I have never considered my basketball skills to be my greatest asset. I have always considered my greatest asset to be my mind, and we need to get kids thinking that way. It is great for kids to have athletic aspirations, but not at the expense of their education. Too often in our culture, we treat entertainers, musicians, and athletes as heroes and forget to highlight the real heroes, our country's 
inventors, and innovators who make a difference in the world today and in the future through their curiosity, resourcefulness, perseverance, and innovation. And though innovation affects every aspect of our daily lives, we never seem to stop and appreciate the contributions of our nation's inventors. We also don't take time to highlight the diversity of inventors. Children need to see that people who look like them have been able to achieve success. By celebrating the vital contributions of inventors, we help children see the value of invention and hopefully inspire to become inventors themselves. I consider it my responsibility to use my trademark, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, to make this world a better place. But it is the responsibility of all of us to inspire future generations to pursue careers in STEM and to find ways to give them access to information and opportunities to, experiences in that, to experience jobs in that field. By encouraging interest in STEM careers, we improve the future and we give our children an opportunity at changing the world by giving them a shot that can't be blocked. Thank you so much. And now, let's cut that ribbon. <laughs>